Hey everyone! In this video I'll show you how I go about writing a script for my video. There are a few major advantages to this. First, writing a script in advance and reciting that script when you record your voice will help you avoid mistakes and just make you sound a lot more comfortable and confident when recording your audio. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I write a script by essentially just rewriting a script I've already written for my double fertilization video. So what you're seeing on the screen now is two documents. The lower document is my visual layout of all my visuals that I want to appear in this video. And on the top is my script, or it will be once I write it. Now, you don't have to have your layout open on your computer like this. Usually when I'm writing a script, I just have my layout open on my iPad and I just kind of look at it as I'm writing the script. I really do use the visuals on this page to guide my writing quite a bit. So let's get started. Now the first thing that I write is my talking head. And you can see I've written a couple of notes here to myself, just reminding me to, you know, be myself and slow down, not talk too fast, and just generally kind of chill while I'm talking into the camera. I still get nervous sometimes when I'm by myself in my office talking into my camera. It's still a little bit awkward, so um, those reminders can, can be good. Okay, now I have a little uh, written here already, kind of a template that I've named Review and Preview, and basically it just reminds me to essentially do kind of the same thing in each talking head introduction I make. I always say, hey everyone, and then I say what we did in the last video just to refresh their memory. So that's the review part. And in this video, I talk about, so I'll write right here where these dots are, uh, what we're gonna do in this video. So I'm essentially previewing this video in the talking head section of my video. And then at the end of the video, you should be able to answer, you know, however many questions I come up with. So I'm going to actually just write this in for this video. So, hey everyone, in the last video, we discussed the development of pollen and ovules and the cells present within these structures, okay? And then in this video, we'll examine how these structures carry out double fertilization. So I always try to link what I did in the last video, in this case, the, the structure of pollen and ovules, to what I'm doing in this video, in this case, double fertilization. And here I've done that by just saying that it's actually the structures that we talked about in the last video, pollen and ovules, that are carrying out the process that we're discussing in this video, double fertilization. So I try to make some kind of link between the last video and this one. Okay, and then next, at the end of the video, you should be able to answer, and I have two questions for this video, and I know that because I've already written them down within my visual layout. So you should be able to answer two questions. And this is essentially what I'll say during my talking head introduction when I'm actually speaking into the camera. And you know, it doesn't have to be this word for word, it's just something to have written down to remind myself basically what I should be saying into the camera. Okay, and then I have a little note here that at this point in the video, I'm switching to the screencast. And another note to myself, just for when I actually start reciting this part of the script and making my recording, just reminding myself to slow down and chill. Now in this video, I decided to do some review before stating my two questions that I want the students to focus on for this video. So I've already written them down here. They're the same exact questions that I have in my visuals layout, just word for word. But before that, I wanna do some review. And this is the two things that I mentioned that I wanted to review in the last video, the two things that I wrote down in the, the knowledge needed section of my master document. Now, I chose not to review 
the structure of the flower, the reproductive parts of the flower, because I basically just thought that the students would know it by now. So I'm going to have, I'm going to make a note to myself to have, make this bold, have flower diagram already showing. And I've written this in bold on purpose. I write all my what I call production notes in bold. That's essentially everything that I want to have happen on the page or appear on the page, but does not include things I'm going to say when I'm making my recording. Things I'm going to say are going to be not in bold, like this. Okay. Here we, and I'll point to the flower. Here we have the male and female reproductive parts of the flower. And maybe I'll point to those as I say that. Point to the male part and point to the female part. And I can mention what they actually are as well the stamen and the carpal. Oh, and by the way, um, since I'm rewriting the script from scratch, this is gonna be different from actually what appears in my double fertilization video. I'm really just rewriting the script just for demonstration purposes. So you guys can get a good idea of how I go about writing my script. Not saying this is exactly how you have to do it. This is just what I do. Okay, here, point to flower. We have the male, point to that and the female point to that, reproductive parts of the flower, the stamen, and the carpal. Okay, and actually I suppose I am reviewing the flower parts a little bit, but that's okay. All right, now I wanna jump into what I actually wanna review, which is essentially the structure of the pollen and the cells within it, and the uh, structure of the alveole, particularly the egg sac, and the cells within that. So now let's, uh, let's start with the pollen grain. Recall, and I use that word a lot just to alert the students that what I'm about to say has been covered in a previous video. Recall that, oh, and I use commas liberally here. Um, those commas are not necessarily grammatically correct or optimal or whatever. They're essentially just cues for me to pause when I'm actually reciting this script when I'm recording by voice. So recall that pollen develops in the anther, and maybe I'll point to the anther just to show them what I'm talking about. And when fully mature has three cells. And then eventually I want to show this diagram over here. So maybe I'll do that by saying this pollen grain and then have this pollen grain appear on the page. So production note, pollen grain appears. This pollen grain and then the pollen grain will appear has three cells, two cells within a larger cell. It has two, make that haploid, sperm cells within a haploid, or rather a vegetative cell with a haploid nucleus. Okay, and I like to reveal really everything as I talk about them. Sometimes I write the production notes as I'm writing a sentence. Sometimes I write the sentence and then go back and add the production notes. And that's what I'm doing here. So after I say two cells within a larger cell, actually after I say it has two haploid sperm cells. Okay, so after I say two cells, I'll have the sperm cells appear within a larger cell, and maybe I'll point to that. This being the larger cell, I'll kind of point to that. And when I say it has two haploid sperm cells, I'll have 
the N, which represents haploid, appears within the sperm cell nuclei within a vegetative cell with a haploid nucleus. And then I'll show the N in that nucleus just to show that that's haploid as well. So this is all review. The students have seen this before, which is why I'm not spending a heck of a lot of time talking about it. I'm just kind of refreshing their memory. Okay, now I also want to work in these labels, right? I kind of forgot to do that as I wrote this script, which is fine, this is just a rough draft. So I'll have to go back and work in these labels. So it has two haploid sperm cells so N appears within the, the sperm cell nuclei, and then sperm cell label appears. So I want the label to appear after these appear, so these will appear, and then the sperm cell label will appear. And then within a vegetative cell with a haploid nucleus, so I'll show N in that nucleus, and then maybe show, then show vegetative nucleus label. So that's this label down here. Okay, now I also wanna mention that this vegetative nucleus is also known as the pollen tube nucleus. So I'll, I'll say that next. The vegetative nucleus is also known as, and then I'll show that arrow and that blue text, this here, this, this arrow and this blue AKA here, I'll show that is also known as the pollen tube nucleus. And then I will show that. So show pollen tube nucleus text, which controls, and I'll scroll down, scroll down here a little bit for you, which controls, and then I'll show that, show that arrow and the blue text of controls controls pollen tube formation. And then I'll show that phrase. Okay, so in this paragraph here, I've essentially just covered, um, I've reviewed the structure of the pollen grain and mentioned that this vegetating nucleus is also known by something else because that'll become important later on in the video. Okay, so hopefully you're getting an idea of how I go about this. Now, um, I'm not gonna go through this entire video. I'm not gonna rewrite this entire script just in the interest of time, but I'm going to skip to where I talk about the actual process of double fertilization, right? So maybe I'll just skip for now the uh, reviewing the structure of the egg sac. So review structure of egg sac here. Right, so that's where I would do that, but I'm actually not gonna do it in this video. Okay, so now I'll talk about the process of the pollen grain moving to the stigma and the pollen tube germinating and the nuclei, the sperm cells, moving through the pollen tube to the egg sac. Okay, so that's what's next here. So let's start with this. In double fertilization, the two sperm cells, and maybe I'll point to the sperm cells in the pollen grain as I say that, have to make their way to the egg sac. First, pollen from the anther, and maybe I'll point to the anther again, makes its way to the stigma. Maybe I'll point to the stigma. Put that in bold. Okay. This can happen through wind, insects, or by other means. Once the pollen grain moves, and this is where I want to animate pollen moving 
from the anther to the stigma. So essentially I just want to move this pollen grain here to the stigma here, right? So this dot, this yellow dot representing the pollen grain is going to move from here to here. And I'll be able to do that and explain everything once I actually overlay my visuals uh, over my recording. It's really, really easy. I'll show you how to do that later. Okay, so that's my kind of first animation. Oh, and I didn't include uh, my notes for the animations that I'm going to have in here. It was just in a different version of this document. But if you want, you can go back and look at my how to put together a visuals video to see the notes that I have for, for this um, visual layout. Okay. Once there, the pollen grain germinates, creating a pollen tube, which travels down the carpal toward the ovule. Okay, and I'll animate that process as well. Essentially, I'm just going to draw this yellow line here in real time while recording. So you'll see that this yellow line representing the pollen tube will go from here down to here. And I have a label, I labeled this the pollen tube, so I wanna work that in somehow as well. So my sentence says, once there, the pollen grain germinates, creating a pollen tube. So maybe I'll put the animation for creating the pollen tube, uh, let's see, here. So here, this yellow line will, will be drawn, creating a pollen tube. And that's where I want to label, label the pollen tube. That's when this label right here will appear. I like to say things and have them appear on the screen at the same time. I just feel like it really makes the point hit home with the student if they can both hear something and see it at the same time. Okay, so I think that's enough to just demonstrate a bit kind of how I write the script and how I use production notes to remind myself when I want something to happen on the screen relative to where in the recording I want that to happen. And I'll show you how to actually overlay your visuals over your recording in a later video, okay? But this is how basically I would write the script. Now, a couple of other things. When I, um, when I write the script, I try to make sure that I don't have a paragraph longer than something like this. And if I do, I try to split it up just to remind myself to take breaks between paragraphs when I'm recording because your mouth does get tired when speaking for a while. Additionally, when I want to make a new page, I'll write something like this. New, usually have that in all capitals, new page. Just to remind myself where I want to have a new page appear, okay? So I would write that after I finished my script for this entire page. Okay, and um, oh, looks like I forgot to put these questions in the right spot. So these questions should go after I finished my review, but before I start the new material. So that's generally where I, where I put those questions. Okay, right there. So here is everything that I've reviewed, both the structure of the pollen grain and the egg sac. And then I pose the questions. And when I'm posing the questions, I'll have them appear on the screen and then I'll get into the, um, you know, the new material. Okay, now I'll end by just writing my outro, my talking head that I have at the end of the video. So here I've ended the screencast part of my video. That's the part that I make and explain everything. And I have a note to myself back to the talking head, another note to myself to slow down chill. And okay, I have a template here written out where I basically guide myself in terms of what I'm going to say into the camera at the end of the video. Okay, so I say, okay, at this point you should be able to. All right, well, what should the students be able to do? Well, they should be able to generally just explain how double fertilization works, okay? 
I said something different in the actual video, but that's fine for now. And then I say, if you can't, feel free to watch part or all of the video again and make sure you complete the learning guide after you've watched this video. I'll go over how to make the learning guide in a later video, but this is a crucial part of this part of this video because remember doing is learning and if they're simply watching this video, they're not gonna get that much out of it. So they really have to be writing down what's appearing on the page in addition to answering some questions that you write in the learning guide. So I always make sure to remind them to complete the learning guide and I usually make the learning guide worth something in terms of credit or points or whatever. Also, it's just nice to remind them that, you know, it is a video so they can watch it as many times as they want. All right, and then I'm going to preview what they're going to learn in the next video. But this video was actually the last video in this chapter. So instead of just previewing the next video, I previewed the entire next chapter, which was chapter three. So I think I wrote something like in, um, well, I'll probably just sum up this chapter, just saying it's at an end. So I'll say something like, this brings us to the end of chapter two, exclamation point, insert a little enthusiasm there. It's a bit of an accomplishment. Little typo there, correct that. And then I'll preview the next chapter. In chapter three, you'll see how a humble Austrian monk using simple genetic crosses and some math discovered two principles of genetics that formed the foundations of the entire field. See you later. Let's just say see you then. Okay, something like that. So that's more than I usually have for my outro. For my talking head, I try to keep it short because you kind of have to memorize it. Or if you're really good at just speaking extemporaneously, you don't really even have to write a script for this part. If you don't want to, you can just essentially summarize what you just talked about in this video and preview what you're going to talk about in the next video or chapter or whatever. So I'm not that great at just speaking off the cuff, so I like to have something written down just to go back to in case I forget what I want to say. But that's completely up to you. Now there's one more thing I wanted to mention, just a couple other examples of production notes or things that you can make a note to yourself to actually show the students on the screen. So some things we've already covered are when something appears. So for example, in this video, sperm cells appear, right? I might write that in the course of my script. I can also maybe want something to disappear. So after I'm done talking about something and I wanna make room for something else, I can make a note to myself to have something disappear. I don't do that too often because if something disappears from the page, then it might be hard for the students to follow later and then they're kind of unsure what they should be writing down in their notes. So I don't use it that often, but you can. So maybe I want the sperm cells to disappear for some reason once I once they go through double fertilization, which I actually think I, I did have happen down here in the later part of the video. So at some point, maybe I want sperm cells to disappear. Okay. You can also make a note to highlight something or remove the highlight. And as we said, you can make a note to animate or move something on the page. You can make a note to label something. And as you saw before, you can make a note to yourself to point to something. I do that a lot and pretty much anything else that you can show in the context of an explain everything video. For example, you could also, you know, play a video within your video. So there are lots of types of production notes that you may want to make to yourself. The most common ones being stuff appearing 
and probably highlighting and also labeling and pointing are also pretty common ones that I use. So there's lots of types of production notes that you'll probably want to write to yourself, just depending on what you actually want to happen on the screen while your video plays. And lastly, remember, when you're actually reciting this script into the microphone and recording your voice, you don't have to worry about any of these production notes. You're gonna add those later after you've recorded your script. So just remember not to actually say any of these production notes. I say that sometimes by mistake, but just remember when you're actually recording just to say things that are not in bold. Okay, so hopefully at this point you have a pretty good idea of the process I use to write my scripts. I do depend heavily on my visual layout and I suggest you do the same. Now, as with everything I'm teaching you here, feel free to modify this process to suit your needs and those of your students. In the next video, I'll teach you how I go about editing my video. See you then.